Hi, Let me Scott. Hear. Hi, Erica. How are you doing? <laughs> Lights, right. camera, action. We're here with Scott Skogerbo, who is my mom's cousin, and he lives in Fort Collins, Colorado, and he's the one who found out about Luxembourg ancestors in our family, and then later Luxembourg citizenship. So thanks for chatting. Sure, Erica. It's really fun to speak with you. How did you find out we had Luxembourg ancestry? Well, my, my father had always told me that, that his mother came from the Luxembourg, his family, and they had immigrated to the United States back in the 1840s. The Ginniger side of the family, they came first, as back when Luxembourg was such a poor country because they'd been war, war torn for a thousand years because the Prussians, the Germans, and the, and the French, and always were fighting over us. Whoever controlled Luxembourg controlled that region of Europe. The city was a fortress. And so when the promise of, of free land came up in America, so many Luxembourgish people left. My second great-grandfather and your third great-grandfather was the baby of the family. And he was the only one to be born in America from that entire line of the family. But he was born in 1849 and he moved west in the 1870s because mm -hmm. they discovered gold in the Black oh. Hills. Gordon Deadwood is so famous. You know, his son told us that he didn't last very long in Deadwood because it was filled with ruffians. Ruffian. Murderers, cutthroats, thieves, gamblers, prostitutes, and all kinds of unsavory characters. So he didn't even really try to strike it rich because he uh -huh. was the young man who came alone. And mm -hmm. so he started west and he didn't get very far. He only got 12 miles and he ran into another pioneer and he said, this is a good valley. You know, once the army, you know, stops their war with the Indians, that that valley down below will be very good. And that was one mile across the South Dakota line in Beulah, Wyoming. So he stayed, built a dugout. The only problem was there weren't wives. There weren't women around. Right, of course. <laughs> there weren't single women walking around. <laughs> <laughs> around the dangerous area. Yeah. Two years after Custer, I mean, it was really a dangerous area. And the uh, Americans had taken the, broken the treaty with the Lakota and took away the Black Hills, which was promised to them as their, mm, yeah. as their reservation and because they found gold. So he sent a word back to Iowa where they had originally settled from Luxembourg and said, Is, are there any prospects? And his, he found Anna Schiltz, mm -hmm. who was wanted to come to America but had no money. So he promised to pay her away if she agreed to marry him. <laughs> like sight unseen, like just she's sight. single and she can come. So sounds good to me. Like there was no... <laughs> Yeah. There was no first date. <laughs> no first date. And she actually lied about her age. We know uh, her tombstone still says that she was, was younger than she really was because we have a birth certificate. Because I guess she was only 29 when she came. But back okay. in those days, that was bed wasted all their whole teens and 20s of her childbearing ages. And that right. was what people wanted to when they had work on the ranch or on the farms and so right. she failed to disappoint so she had six children okay so she yeah. she had time to pump them out <laughs> so, <laughs> so she was 29 but she lied and said she was younger yes yeah, so i think she was 25. Oh, okay so she smudged the numbers so he went back to iowa brought her back to wyoming and and her six children were born in a cave in a cave so they had built a cabin in front of the cave and it extended back into the, you know, into the cave and... And were they, they were ranching? At first they ranched, but Anna had been a daughter of, of a family that ran a hotel and a pub. In Luxembourg. Uh, in Luxembourg. And so she knew the rule. She knew how to do it. Oh, okay, and so, okay. And so they, they became hoteliers in, in the town of Beulah. Okay. To raise their uh, family after starting out as ranchers. So that's the, that's the story of the Ginnigers and the Schultz and how they got together. But we never knew anything about the Schultz family. We didn't know where in Luxembourg they came. We didn't know the whole story. 
Mm-hmm. Until um, I became very much interested in genealogy and found a little blurb in the 1919 newspaper. Her nephew had come to visit to visit his aunt. He mentioned Charles Comey's of Exile, Iowa, and their family had written it down, where our family had not. And they came from uh, Nederanden, which is uh, just outside Luxembourg City. Mm-hmm. That was the very first time, so I put it down on Ancestry.com. Well, fast forward a few years after that, I received a message from a distant cousin who, who had descended from Anna Schiltz's sister, Louise, and said, oh, by the way, did you know that we qualify for Luxembourgish citizenship if you're interested? Okay. Message me back, and that's how we found it. I checked out the Luxembourg American Cultural Society, which is what he told me to check out, and it was legit. The Luxembourg government had opened up a window of opportunity for all people who had immigrated to the United States or elsewhere in the world, Brazil or Belgium or France, you know, it didn't matter what country. At the time, Luxembourg was so poor that they said, wait, we're losing half our population. We have to do something. So they went and said, if you leave, you lose your Luxembourg citizenship and oh. left anyway. So they yeah. tried to make amends for that. Oh, okay, and gotcha. Forward, you, know, you know, over a hundred years. And they left a 10 year window of opportunity for everybody to to be able to reclaim the Luxembourg citizenship. And we caught it in 2016, two years before it was expired in 2018. Gotcha, okay. What we had to do to reclaim that was to prove that we descended direct line to the immigrant. Right. So what were the requirements? So we just had to get, starting at Anna Schultz, we had to get her birth, marriage, death records. Birth certificate, marriage, and and death certificate. Every generation leading to the person. And then after that, then that was phase one, which had to, the government of Luxembourg had to figure that, that out, that it was legitimate. And how did you find the paperwork? You had to know where to look. And that was that was the other big problem. We didn't know exactly where to look in Iowa. Because all the only note that we had was it said that, you know, Peter Ginniger left in eighteen eighty four back to Iowa to get married and return. And so all we said was Iowa. Oh so okay. We, <laughs> it could be anywhere in Iowa. When we discovered that little blurb in the newspaper that said that Charles Comey's had gone to visit his aunt from Zyra, Iowa. So I, I checked mm. that out and that's what I found. Wow, detective work. Then after you, we got the certificate, then we had to make sure that we were law-abiding citizens. So we had to get our FBI background checks and mm-hmm. we had to get our fingerprints. So do you have any other advice for people maybe interested in, in reclaiming citizenship or digging into their history. You can Google what's called citizenship by descent. So if you descend from a person who is a citizen of that Mm -hmm. country, there's still quite a few countries that are still open for that. The thing that I would recommend to people is sort of like what I have done with not knowing that I could have obtained Luxembourg citizenship is I started asking questions about the descendants you know, my ancestors mm-hmm. before the old timers passed away. And so we were able to answer the questions before they, before it's too late to know that knowledge. Ask your grandmother, ask your great grandmother if she's still alive, what, where they were from, what yeah. their names were and write it down. Why do you think countries like Luxembourg and Ireland and Italy, why do you think they're doing this, like opening up the possibility to reclaim citizenship. Well, um, this is just an educated guess based on some conversations I've had with people in the same boat as us. Luxembourg had gone from, you know, 100 years ago as a very poor country, but because they had remade themselves as a, as a financial powerhouse, they have, you know, banking rules which make it attractive for very wealthy people to become to move to Luxembourg and put their money in Luxembourgish banks and so it became a very wealthy country as a matter of fact 
per capita, they're the wealthiest country in the world because they have tons of millionaires and billionaires. I think it's because they need now workers. They need right. these regular right. run-of-the-mill workers that do the everyday job that most of us do. Mm -hmm. So by opening up that citizenship, you know, uh, that will help. I, I look at the list of people who reclaimed Luxembourg citizenship and America wasn't anywhere near the top. For, you know, older Americans with dual citizenship, you know, it may be that we would, once we retire, that we would move there and not steal, you know, or take jobs from right. people who live there, but then use our retirement savings in the local and yeah, economy, yeah. which boosts it all up as well. There's a lot of retirees in Spain because of the weather <laughs> and the Mediterranean. <laughs> okay. Well, I will say goodbye and thank you again. You're welcome. Okay, goodbye. Bye-bye.